Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Shino Bird Blue Eyes deck. Well, it's not really Shino Bird Blue Eyes, more of as it is Blue Eyes with the Shino Bird Rituals tossed in. Now, the reason for that is that this deck just has a good amount of synergistic, you know, utility with the fact that you can just have a bunch of starter cards, you have the draw cards in the form of trade-ins and stuff that you can use to get access into your uh, Rituals very effectively. You've got Pre-Prep, which is a solid starter card, a nice plus one card, but also, you know, you've got the Shino Baron and Shino, Baron, uh, Shino Baroness, uh, tongue twister, um, for some reason. I don't understand why. Um, it's just hard for me to say Shino Baroness. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, but two of each of them, one clears back row, one clears monsters. Essentially, the entire purpose of the deck is to use your cards like your melodies, your trade-ins, your pre-preps, just solid good starter cards and starter interactions to get you into your Blue Eyes engine as well as a potential playline with your Shino Birds with the two rituals because these can clear massive amounts of things off the board. If you can clear three monsters with one go with the Shino Baron, you don't have to use alternatives pop effect and you could use that just as an OTK engine because that by itself is 6,000 damage by itself. And these also just happen to be level eights, meaning they're trade-in targets. They also happen to be pre-prep targets. They also happen to have synergy in grave with their own ritual spell, Shino Bird Calling. If you're able to trade in one of these into the graveyard and then also be able to resolve calling, then you're able to banish the one in grave to summon the one out of hand, stuff like that. But you're also just capable of tributing the blue eyes that you have on field uh, or tributing, you know, blue eyes or dragon spirit of whites that you have in your hand, which you can recover off of your white stone of ancients. So it's not even like it's a real cost investment. Overall, it's just a really good, like, in theory thing that I've been trying out for this deck, and it's been working pretty well. Now there are, there are some altercations that you could make. Uh, you could change the list pretty heavily. In fact, you could actually just take out the sages and take out things like Valor that's only good because Sage can search it, and then maybe trim down on the stones and then play more spirits in your deck rather than playing with the uh, with the Sage engine and stuff like that. So you could play like a suite of Aratamas, a suite of Nikitamas, or you could play some uh, Shino Bird Cranes. You could, do, you could do a few different things to change up how the list functions and operates and then just have the blue eyes, the big motherfucking blue eyes cards, be the supporting cast to the spirits and the Shino Birds. Uh, there's, there's quite a few things that you could actually do to take this deck uh, forward into different dimensions, but basically this is just the, this is the list I've been testing as of right now. I really love the fact that these cards can clear so many cards at once. It takes so much pressure off the rest of your deck if you're able to resolve these. If you're able to just start your turn, resolve one of these, and spin back row, for example, like that's just huge. And then if you're able to like just drop blue eyes for free, you're able to make rank eights with these things, so they don't bounce to your hand. So like that's not a that's not a drawback. Like there's there's tons of good things I can say about these cards. But regardless, let's not waste too much more time just talking about this deck and why I think it's really cool and interactive and neat and stuff like that. Uh, so let's just not waste any more time on that and let's just jump straight into the game and see how it functions, shall we? See how it does on camera because my testing it's been doing pretty well. But knowing my luck, whenever I put a deck on camera, it for some reason just does not want to operate. So let's see if we uh, let's see if we have some success right here or not. But let's just jump straight into the game and not waste any more time. All right. So based off whether or not I get to win, rock paper scissors here is going to <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, well, actually, this actually works for me. Um, if he chooses to go first, I have no idea what he's playing, so he could just choose to go second. I've got a lot of people on my Discord that do that. They just they uh, they take their uh, they take their chance to uh, to do that sort of stuff, uh, but so it looks like he has chosen to go first, which is good. That works for me. That works for me in the best way possible, because this deck actually prefers to go second. Now, this double copies of Effect Veiler in my hand really actually sucks. <laughs> it's actually just the worst. Um, the thing here that might happen. Okay, he's playing this, which means this is great. Ooh, I'm gonna Veiler the shit out of this, and it's gonna be great. <laughs> Uh, but he's playing another 60 card variant. Okay, uh, so that that works for me. I get to Valor this, and then potentially draw into something like trade in or pre prep or something like that. But I mean, basically, we're gonna see what we can uh, what we can get access to off of the card that we draw. Uh, now, the option that we have uh, for like building this deck further into the future is to cut down on the Sage engine. Uh, but then just build up the spirit engine. That way you have like the blue eye stuff and a more well-supported spirit engine to go with 
uh, the stuff and like the blue eyes cards just apply pressure being you know cards that bypass a normal summon uh, that's definitely something that could be a possibility because sage is definitely not like mandatory to the game plan at all uh, for that matter because you can just use your uh, your stones and stuff like that and get access into some pretty good stuff uh, but so based off this okay so he's one for one in here I'm just I'm gonna Veiler the Decatron too. I mean, shit. Open double Veiler, might as well, right? Right. <laughs> Let's not let him send any more cards to grave. Um, he's got a Deviate and a Sightsmith in his <laughs> his grave. <laughs> uh, it's a blue eyes. This is terrible. Oh, I bricked horrendously with this deck. This is not supposed to be how this goes, uh, but that's fine. We can work with this. No more tears. It's all right. We'll just intern and hope that we don't die. All right. Because um, this thing isn't a once per turn effect, it's a when it's summoned effect. So I'm not worried about this discarding another card and summoning Darling Cobra from deck. Not at all. Uh, okay, Pot of Desires. Good. You're going to try and draw into more cards, and they're probably going to ruin me. That's going to be the way this goes. This is not the way I wanted the first outing of this deck on camera to go. Uh, this deck definitely functions a lot better <laughs> than it looks like it's doing. But you have to draw your starter cards, which are Melody of Awakening Dragon. Pre-preparation of rights, trade in those cards. I've currently drawn into zero of those starter cards, and uh, the deck has a good quantity of them, in fact, because you do have access into all of those cards that are just simple plus ones, like the the trade ins. Even the cards of consonants is a starter card. Sage is a starter card. I just haven't seen any of those cards. <laughs> Whoa! Um, instead, I drew double Valor. What a what an amazing deck. What an amazing deck duelist. Um, so he's milled two. He's got eight on the field. He could summon that Sightsmith back if he wants to. Hmm. Here's the thought: Is that it? Does he want to? Uh, if he plays something like Black Rose, he could uh, he could go into Black Rose with these two, and then go into an Omega with those two, with the Black Rose and the Decatron, and then summon back the Sightsmith um, or the Deviate. The Deviate would be live then as well because it would, the Decatron going to his grave would be a guaranteed third name. This is all assuming he has no names in hand, right? Uh, this is this is what I'm assuming is uh, is happening, or else I would imagine there'd already be some on the board. But then again, I can't I can't argue hypotheticals. Ah, void imagination. Okay, so that's a pretty good card to have in his hand. Uh, that actually makes it to where he could put Sidesmith and Deviate on the board if he wanted to. But I digress. Uh, he's banishing the Deviate. He's summoning Sidesmith. Uh, it comes out as a level one, which means that he's. I mean, he's probably going to attack me with all this. Is it all battle damage I take half, or battle damage from the monsters? Um, all battle damage they inflict becomes half. So I take full damage from these, but I take half damage from this. Uh, so that's fine. The question is, what is he going to do after this, though? He could synchro with Seismus, <laughs> Scorpio, and uh, Raiden into an Omega, and then uh, and then do stuff that way, I guess. There's This just seems like a really weird hand for him. Uh, in terms of how it goes. Uh, he didn't even have to play this to summon this, though. That's the weird thing, is that he could have played this later. Because these were eight. So this this fell into the summoning requirements of this card. So I'm kind of curious as to why he summoned it with the imagination up, because that's just less damage. I don't know. We will find out. But what I do have access into doing, right, is I can uh, I can draw into one of my spirit cards. I can draw into Melody of Awakening Dragon, or I can draw into Trade In, or I can draw into Pre Prep. Um, all of those would be good. Okay, Reasoning and Zoo Barrage. That is a stone. That is the least live card in my deck right now. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, this is not how this was supposed to go. This is not how this was supposed to happen. <laughs> Gotta draw starter cards, my man. Uh, these Veilers are probably gonna turn into more draw cards, honestly. More starter cards. Like, maybe more cards of consonances. Maybe, I can't even remember. I think Upstart isn't in the deck. That's definitely probably so that could, something that could be added. Hell, even something like Brilliant Fusion could be added. Uh, because all of the, uh, all of the Shino Bird things are, I believe... Are they light? They might be wind. I know the tokens they summon are wind, uh, but the Shino Bird rituals might actually just be wind. I can't remember, but I, for some reason I feel like they're light, and if they are light, then that means you could send them with uh, with Brilliant Fusion alongside a Garnet, <laughs> and then that would, you know, give you something to work with. 
But I digress. It's probably not something that's actually real or relevant. Uh, but I'm just gonna lose this turn. Uh, pretty, pretty easily. There's, there's, unless he attacks this with the Decatron for some reason. Or if he attacks with this. If he attacks with this first, that's, uh, well, let's see. He's attacking with the Raiden, which means this is 12, that's 17, uh, which leaves me at, like, s that's 17, which leaves me at 16. And then this does 13, so I'm at 300. Boys, we getting there. Boys, we getting in there. <laughs> we got you. We got this. We got one more shot. Um, and I'm pretty sure he's going to use the Sightsmiths to banish my uh, White Stone of Ancients. If he doesn't, then uh, then I'm not quite sure what's going on in life, specifically. Uh, because he, he does have the capability of doing that. He has the capability of banishing this when it activates in the end phase. Uh, and by doing that, he could d just uh, tribute like the Decatron. And, uh, and that just like lets it be super free, but I digress. I really want to draw into one of the uh, one of the ritual monsters, or just one of my starter cards. We could potentially pull this entire game back from the brink of defeat if we draw into a starter card. Oh, really? He's going to do Omega here. All right, I can respect that. That means that this is definitely going to resolve, and that means I'm just going to probably summon a Blue Eyes straight from my deck. I'm not going to fuck with Dragon Spirit of White. Um, well, actually, yes, I will. I will fuck with Dragon Spirit of White. Because I'll use it, I'll tribute it to summon the blue eyes out of my hand. I'll get rid of his Void Imagination, so that's not a factor. I'll get, I'll, uh, I'll tribute it to summon the blue eyes out of my hand. And then this would be able to be brought back off Gospel of Revival, making a rank 8. So this is this is how we win games. We, uh, we have these thought processes. This is how we win games. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do it now, so that... Uh, he can't Omega me during my turn and hit the blue eyes out of my hands. <laughs> that would be a shitty interaction, right? Um, that would be the worst interaction of how that would uh, go. But so, we'll special this blue eyes, and that way this immediately threatens the Omega. Um, Melody of Awakening Doragon. Alright. Alright. Alright, boys. Alright, my mans. This is how we do. This is how we figure this out. I'm gonna go ahead and Gospel. Um, this is probably going to be Fairy Tail Snow. If, if he's targeting a face down card, it's probably Fairy Tail Snow. Um, oh, was it a Deviate? Okay. I'm, I can respect that as well. Um, so the Deviate would come back. Uh, I've got access to the White Stone of Ancients uh, as, a, as a potential play. I can make Cypher take his. Uh, try and take his Omega. Um, but that wouldn't really matter. Now would it? I could take his Decatron Synchro with it. Ah, that's a thought. Mmm, that's a thought. That's a thought indeed. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this, right? I'm just going to set this card. And I'm going to set this card because he's letting me. Alright then. Uh, so now nothing, nothing that I'm afraid of is going to happen as far as dealing with this Omega. Uh, I could actually just do this, bring the Dragon Spirit of White back, and then I could just go straight into like a Divine Dragon Felgrand um, as an option as well. Uh, but I'm just going to do this straight away. And uh, and we're just going to try and enter Battle Phase, because this has to activate in Main Phase, right? So he's going to be incentivized to use the Omega's effect. And then when the Omega uses its effect, it interrupts the changing of phases, and then I get to proceed in the Main Phase uh, as if nothing happened. So, uh, so that's going to be what we mess with here, as far as, uh, as as far as a play line goes. And if he does that, actually, I think I just win. If he uses Omega to banish here, yes, he's using Omega to banish. Very good, very good for me indeed. Uh, so this means I just get to win on the spot, because now in main phase I'm able to do this. Uh, my sound is completely unsynced. Uh, it seems like at least from from the audio levels that I'm seeing over on my. Uh, over on my uh, OBS recording, uh, my sound levels are completely unsynced. So, what I've got here is I can special summon this, and this is just game. Wow! <laughs> we just clawed this one back for no reason. <laughs> because now I get to special this special sit in attack position, so I just special this blue eyes. I mean, shit, we're not summoning or activating any Shino Bird cards in general. Does he have a Fairy Tail Snow Engrave? He does not. Does he have one in hand? God, I hope not. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if that card can activate from hand. Let's be real. I have no idea if it can activate from hand or not. 
Uh, but so what we'll do is we'll just we'll attack with these, and this should just be game. <laughs> please, please just let this be. Let this be how we do this. Let this be how this game just gets clawed back from the from the clutches of being at 300 for no reason. <laughs> please, I want this. I need this. I deserve this. I wish. I wish for this to happen. Come on. No, 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 no nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that wasn't the way that I intended this game to go down at all. But, uh, because I didn't activate a single Shino Bird card, because I didn't get to any of my starter cards. But that's, that's the thing. That's the issue uh, that this deck has that could be fixed by swapping the deck over to a little bit more of a spirit-based focus, like cutting the sages and putting in things like Aratamas and Nikitamas and stuff like that. There's definitely things that could be tweaked to the list to allow that to be the case. And then it would allow this deck access into like rank fours and shit like that. Not that that would be the most relevant thing in the world, but it's still something that could affect it. Uh, stuff like that. But basically, this was not at all how I in intended this game to go. But hell, we'll just take that win. We take those. We'll, we'll take those out of nowhere victories like they like they don't even matter. Drew into Melody of Awakening Dragon. The play, the turn structure went exactly the way I needed it to, and then I got it. So, we'll work with that. We take those. As I've said, we take those. But, anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon itself. I'm giving away a box of Maximum Crisis, first week of May for the people that support me during the month of April on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, then definitely go check out the reward tiers over there to get information on it. Also, if you're looking to get into my personal Discord server where me and 15 other people just chat on a daily basis and I also play games with those people for these videos, that is where Iradium came from. If you're interested in either of those things, then definitely go check out the Patreon page as well and look at the reward tiers. But other than that, if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business will have dealt with thus far both shipping and pricing wise but definitely check out their site and let them know that phoenix sent you but other than that that is it for this video again thanks for watching thanks for your time and as usual guys take care i will see you in the next video